everyone and welcome back to my channel or if you're new my name's Tori. So this question gets asked to me all the time over on my TikTok so I decided to film a YouTube video so you can have the full the full effect. So today I'm going to be showing you my reptile room slash bedroom slash where I keep all my animals. I'll kind of give a bit of an enclosure tour for each. I do have some animals outside of my bedroom so I'll show you those as well. Basically a reptile house tour. If you don't know already, I have around 40 pets, dogs, cats, birds, but I will just be showing you my reptile room today. And yeah, I'll kind of give you a rundown of all my enclosures, where everything's kept. Quick disclaimer though, because I feel like I need to say this before I show you anything. The reason I've been putting off doing this video for so long is because I never feel like everything is 100% ready and it's still not. I will definitely show you some things that I want to improve or things that are due an upgrade or upgrades I'm working on. While everything's in their like minimum size enclosures, there are reptiles that I want to increase in the future. I'm constantly moving things around, I'm constantly upgrading people and I think it'll be really fun to have this video to look back on to see how things have improved. You know, if I had filmed this a year ago, I would have been able to show you all the massive amounts of improvements I've made over the past year. But I was like, oh, but I want to work on this first, I want to work on that first. And the truth of reptile keeping is, is everything always needs improving so if i don't show you i never will but just take that into account i will kind of be mentioning it throughout things that i want to work on and you know i'm not perfect there are definitely animals that i believe deserve more enrichment or i'm adding uvb to or you know i'm going to be very transparent in this video so please take that into account we can all do things to improve even if you think you've got the best care i can pro almost promise you there's something you can do to add to it another thing that i will obviously say i don't ever recommend having this amount of animals it's not for everyone's lifestyle it is part of what i do it's my main hobby it's what i spend my money and time doing it's not suited to everyone so this isn't me glamorizing having this amount of animals this is me just showing and showing you how much work and time and space these guys take and without further ado i really hope you enjoy the video okay so we're gonna start out in my living room we're just gonna have to excuse the bad lighting it's just gonna have to be like this for the next couple of minutes so over the past year i've actually started using my living room for some of my reptiles just because i wanted to have bigger and better enclosures and i couldn't do that in the space in the other room and we'll kind of get to that but i'm just gonna show you what's behind me i just have one wall and i'm also gonna be adding to this so this will definitely be a feature in my next couple of videos but let me show you so over here i have a few different enclosures mostly my really big habitats so over here you'll notice nothing is in here this actually doesn't even have doors this is an ongoing project i have at the moment this is a four by two by two which i think will eventually house my emerald tree skinks the reason i say think is because that is what i bought it for however they're so so tiny i never really saw a full-grown adult before i bought this enclosure for them so i do think i'll still be using it for that purpose i have remodeled and repurposed some of it with mesh that they can't escape but it will definitely be a work in progress and this is where i'm up to at the moment so this will definitely be a future project for this year this one up here houses my milk snake i definitely want to add a few different bits to this enclosure including a lock because he has recently escaped as well as uvb and just some more foliage and climbing opportunities but the reason i haven't kind of done that at the moment is because i am going to give him a bigger enclosure ever since he's moved into a less active room being my living room he's a lot more active in his enclosure so originally he was in this tank in my room and was clearly a bit scared of me he was like a rescue rehome and would never ever come out and now he's got some peace and quiet he's so much more active here he is he's a lot more active now in this tank so i really want to give him a bigger enclosure honestly because he really does utilize all of this space then this one down here belongs to my aki monitor negan where it's like a five foot enclosure i could definitely do with adding some more bits to this i actually want to add some more slate over in this corner i've just given him his breakfast so ignore that i also want to add a, another heat bulb for in the winter when temperatures in the uk are lower but for now he just has one heat bulb in his new enclosure but he does have plenty of places to hide he's definitely one of my more active reptiles super deep substrate and i have no idea where he is which is pretty typical for Negan. but yeah there's definitely some room for improvement in this room but as i said these guys have only come in here over the past three or four months or so so i'm super excited to expand on this okay so breaking it down you walk into my room and you have my door and me hi <laughs> 
Then I have my first lot of shelving. People always ask where I get my shelving from. You can pretty much get them from any home department store. Mine personally, I'm in the UK and this is from Homebase. And I also have a similar one that's a bit smaller, but this is like the medium sized one. As you can see, I have a bunch of tanks on this and it's been a big work in progress of like who I wanted over here. So we'll go for it, we'll run it down. So on the bottom enclosures, I have my two crested geckos. This one I've actually upgraded to having UVB and a grow light. However, this one I'm going to be adding real real soon. If we take a look inside, these are all Exoterra 18 by 18 by 24s. This is an overview of what one of the enclosures sort of look like. I definitely want to add some vines, I think, to this one or just some more climbing opportunities. I kind of wanted to leave the light to allow the plants to grow first, but I will definitely be expanding things up higher. If there's any in-depth enclosure tours you guys want to see, you can of course let me know. But they are in there in their little coconut and the same kind of thing over this one although this one definitely has some growing to do and I've had a lot of plants die in this one so I definitely want to add a grow light I have my little bin over here because reptile keepers know we get a lot of rubbish <laughs> working my way up I have my hog island boas enclosure he is currently a tiny tiny baby and is also on paper towels currently while he's still in quarantine I just want to monitor him for a bit longer than I have already and he is down there my sweet little prick -em. as i said he is a hog island boa he's very spicy though so i'm just gonna leave him be this is by no means his forever home he will actually grow to be about four or five foot but as i said he's a teeny tiny little noodle at the moment so this is just his temporary enclosure and kind of what i like to make my quarantine enclosures look like Moving over and next to him is my Pac-Man frog Gus's enclosure. The thing about Gus is I set up a lovely bioactive enclosure. We are also in this video going to ignore the dirty waters because that is all getting done tonight. But as I was saying, he had a lovely fully bioactive enclosure and I can never find him for feeding, for anything. He had all these lovely stones. He had a lovely enclosure in my opinion and I've literally had to tear it apart to keep finding him and checking in on him. So he lives his life in there. He's my pet rock and he's pretty happy. Next enclosure up is my leopard gecko Dobby, who is in a large low exoterra. These, in my opinion, are excellent for leopard geckos and provide them with just the right amount of space. Obviously, bigger is always better, but there he is. I always kind of move stuff around. I'm never 100% happy with it, but I'm happy with where it is at the moment and I'd like to say he is too. Then on top of that, I have my crested gecko eggs at the back. And I like to leave them someplace dark, but also that has a regular heat. And then at the front here are a few of my arachnids. I have my Mexican red knee tarantula, as well as three dwarf species at the back. I like to, again, just keep them up here as this tank does provide some heat, but not enough that they're overly cooked <laughs> at the top here is some juvenile crested geckos i do currently keep them in tubs until they're old enough to go in big enclosures crested geckos are the one species that i actually would say that too big of an enclosure can be dangerous for them as they can't find their food and also babies really need high humidity so i really love to use tubs for these guys but i do think around juvenile sub-adult stage i'd like to be adding uvb so i will eventually be upgrading these all to exoterras as well to kind of complete this shelving unit next Thanks for making our way over we have my two zen habitats probably one of my favorite lot of enclosures they are actually home to my bearded dragon astro and my blue tongue skink toast as you can see astro is up here climbing and using the full two foot anyone who says bearded dragons don't use height they definitely do she is just up there chilling and minding her own business and she definitely needs a clean but we're trying to be authentic in this video and again if i keep everything perfect i would never ever film it and this is one of my favorite stickers then down at the bottom is my blue tongue skinks enclosure again i don't reckon you'll be able to see her but she is in here somewhere and she does love up every inch of this enclosure definitely one of my happiest builds i'm super happy with this i do want to add some more stuff to my bearded dragons but to be honest my bearded dragon does appreciate the open space a bit more than my other species i have this divider as well which at the back 
features all my heating and then keeps all of my reptile bits and clearly kitchen roll at the front. At the top here, we have lots of plants. If you keep reptiles, you probably keep plants. Um, I feel like they go hand in hand. I have a lot of spare tubs all around here and at the back. I use these for different quarantine animals and I do also have my corn snake in quarantine up there as well as my white tree frogs in quarantine as well and these will all be going into their future homes real real soon but I also love to keep just a variety of tubs because I do like to quarantine all my animals for at least three months making my way over my bedside table I actually got these stickers given to me recently they were gifted by a lovely girl who has an amazing Etsy shop that has all these informative stickers so I can't wait to put these onto my enclosures. Moving over we have my bed which obviously features my two lovely dogs, my chihuahua and my labrador. Then next to my bed is home of the crested geckos. Starting at the bottom I have my leopard gecko Dory, a lot of you know she has neurological issues. She was in a glass enclosure for a very long time, I actually opted recently to swap her back to a tub as I didn't feel like she was eating very well. She also doesn't do a good job at regulating her body temperature temperature as well as UVB. So I only provide a heat mat for her however I really do not recommend this. This is just because she has neurological issues. On top of here I have a few of my sub-adult crested geckos again waiting for their forever homes. This is Phoenix my absolute baby. Love her to pieces. Don't know why she wants to climb the door all the time. And that is Taro. On top of here are some of my recent hatchlings. These all stay in tiny tiny tubs for the first week or two of life because I want to make sure that they've shared their eating I want to make sure that they're having crickets and they're so so tiny honestly even in here I lose them and these are all less than a week old as well as these and finally up here I have some of my feeders I keep a lot of my feeders and crested gecko equipment out in the outbuilding which I won't show you today because it's an absolute mess but these are some of my go-to so I have locusts crickets super worms and my isopod colony in as well in here so this is definitely where I want to make the most improvement and I want to upgrade and I of course have a massive bucket of substrate on the floor because why would I not in a reptile room you know <laughs> Next, making my way over, as I said, this is still my bedroom, so I do have my wardrobe. As we move over in my wardrobe, I have my royal python, who is about to make a break for it. Um, this is Bonoffi. He is currently in a three-foot enclosure because he's only a teeny tiny baby, but he will eventually be upgraded into a four-foot for sure. This could definitely do with some improvement because it's not a permanent enclosure. I haven't put that much work into it, and he knocks everything flying. I don't know if that's just my royal python, but yeah, he's a bit crazy. Moving over. I have both of my dog's crates as well as a lot of mess in this corner. Everyone has a one corner of their room that's messy and yeah, this is mine. I have both my dog crates. Both my dogs are fully crate trained as well as their water bowl. Next, I have this cart that I originally got to like get all my reptile supplies in and like push around, but it's gradually just become filled with stuff. <laughs> the same as this trunk. It's literally purely reptile supplies with nowhere else to live. Up here is my TV with a lovely reflection of moi in. Next, my mister. Absolutely love this. I've got through two of these that I use so, so often, but honestly, it's one of the best purchases I've ever, ever bought. Down here, next to my mister, right by my door are my emerald tree skinks. As I said, they have an enclosure waiting for them. Um, they'll be going into the living room into a five by two by two. And when they do, my white tree frogs will be having this enclosure. I'm just waiting for them to grow up a little bit because, well, you can't even and see them so that's why I want to be able to find them in their new enclosure and make sure that they're eating enough and just make sure that they're healthy overall before they go into their permanent home and finally on top of them are my giant African land snails they're actually in this greenhouse that I got from Ikea I absolutely love this I don't know if they'll outgrow it and need a bigger home eventually because they're still relatively small at the moment but yeah my two giant African land snails are in there and honestly I love this enclosure I didn't know what I was going to use it for but I'm super happy with them being in there for now but again I'm happy to upgrade them in the future and honestly I think that is everything so I really hope you enjoyed today's video as ever if there's anything you want to see from me please let me know and I'll see you guys in the next one bye